so the person is an archaeologist. And, I, and I'm sure you're all wondering, uh, you're an archaeologist at a peace festival. Um, what does an archaeologist know about peace? <coughs> but I am not just an archaeologist. I am also a former refugee. I come from Somalia. And in 1991, my family fled the civil war. Uh, I witnessed extreme violence. Uh, but my family ended up in Sweden. And the contrast couldn't, couldn't be more striking. Here you have a serene Scandinavian calm. And Somalia, with everything that is happening. The two images were also completely contrasting. Here you have Swedish society, which is very successful, Swedish people successful, uh, probably one of the best countries in the world to live in. And I come from what is known as one of the most failed countries. And me being present in Sweden was an evidence of that. So I asked myself, how do I fit in into this society? And I started doing archaeology, I studied the past, and I didn't even have to go very far into the past to find commonness, something that I shared with Swedish society. Because the Swedish people, only 100 years ago, suffered extreme poverty, which led, in fact, more than a million people crossing the Atlantic to settle in the US to escape this poverty. So by reading the narratives of the people who describe their lives, I felt it resonated with me. Studying the past made sense of my present. And I could appreciate Sweden. I could appreciate and see they've come from just in a short time from such poverty to such welfare state. And then I thought about my own image. So I've gone beyond Sweden's current image of success. And I saw just 100 years ago what was happening. What is the image in my country? Can I allow myself another experience? And I learned that the past is full of opportunities. There is a different past possible. So I became an archaeologist of Somalia and Somaliland and the Horn of Africa. And I discovered that actually what the image we have today of Somalia, the war, the poverty, the extremism, um, and the famine, is just something resulting from the last few decades. What I discovered was actually that for centuries, this region was very successful, and it was part of the Indian Ocean the civilization of the Indian Ocean. It had ruined towns, um, over 100 of them, all over the place. And they showed a wealth. There was a peaceful, prosperous society for centuries. So how can then we fix a society that has had such a long record of peace and prosperity in a few decades of war. So I want you to think about the images that we have of people and how we have these fixed ide uh, identities. And even Europe was not a place where Africans always wanted to come to. I know, for example, no African would have wanted to come here in 1941. So um, we really need to look at how the past can help us understand our presence and also appreciate even the difficult times. Because when you see how you got somewhere, then that makes sense to you. And also you can explain to people and you can talk about it. And nowhere is destined for only good things. See Sweden, within 100 years, two contrasts. And nowhere is destined only for bad things. And looking at then how the world around us and what we are faced with in terms of uh, conflicts, we have people who are fighting over these 
uh, narratives and fixed identities. Uh, for example, in, the, in, in India, we had people destroying each other's heritage, whether they are Hindus or Muslims. Um, why? Because they believe that, oh, this 500-year-old mosque, um, actually the, the Muslims who built here destroyed a temple in order to build that mosque but now we are destroying this 500-year-old mosque because we are Hindus and they are Muslims. But actually, if you look at it, the people 500 years ago were the same people. They will probably, what they're destroying is actually their own heritage. The same thing happened in the Balkans. People, just because they changed religion or nation, are fighting each other along these fixed identities of, uh, through nation or religion. People have destroyed Christian tombs, Muslim tombs, um, and um, argued this is who we are, us and them. But these are problems that actually come out of the fact that often people, they don't see their heritage and their identities represented in, say, their communities. If you have just one identity, one dominant narrative, if you like, one voice, then a lot of people will feel that they're not part of that. But if we look at the multiple voices which the past is made of, um, then we can, we can see that actually we share something. And now I seem to be contradicting myself. On one hand, I'm saying there is a diversity into the past, and on the other, I'm saying we share something. But in fact, actually, we share diversity. That's really the key. Because times are never static. History is dynamic. People's identity is fluid. We move forth and back. And I would like to also urge you to think about that, to think about your lives and your stories. Often, um, when we look at our surroundings, we see a lot of people, we meet a lot of people. But when we look at, for example, the history books, do not reflect that diversity. So how can we invest in sustainable peace? I think we should revise the history books and the history curriculum. I think we should put all the voices, all the, all the identities, all the diversities, good and bad, in those books and also include the omitted parts of history. Because when we accept that things don't have to be fixed, the past doesn't have to be fixed, the present doesn't have to be fixed, and the future doesn't have to be fixed, then we can accept that people are fluid, are different, and whether you're prosperous or not is just about that time, that moment in life. So we should start revising the history books to make them more human, reflecting of our, all of our stories. And for us here today together, I would like to invite you and urge you to tell your own stories. I mean, I tried to make sense of my, my life in Sweden, and I found that I fitted in in my context because I could understand the relationship. Certain stories resonated with me. And maybe together today, you talk to somebody next to you, and all of those fixed ideas along nation and religion, um, you can go beyond that and you will find something that actually resonates with you.